Kato. Mr. The Speaker. question is that the motion is agreed to the Hon. Alfred Nara. Thank you, Mr Speaker. I rise to take a call on the Child Poverty Reduction Bill. Can I acknowledge the Prime Minister, uh, as she has said uh, in her statements, that uh, it's a statement that goes to the core when people say, what is it that we are called to this place for? Uh, what is it that we were elected for and our core responsibilities? And, uh, Prime Minister, I want to acknowledge your words, and as you've said, that when you came to this place uh, some years ago, you had made a declaration that the basis of your calling was to ensure that child, children and young people in New Zealand and Aotearoa live a long and happy and well life. And so I want to acknowledge that, because that also goes, it challenges us to ask that question. What are we here for? What's our purpose? What's our sense of direction? And what will we do to the best of our efforts? And I want to acknowledge the fact is that your call and your acknowledgement of that has asked us that same question, to what is it that we are called to this place for? I want to acknowledge your leadership and being able to say that this child poverty reduction bill is something that will rise the issue of poverty above the politics. And so in my um, words that I would share today, I'll be calling it, this is our bill. This is our intent. And so I would hope that when we talk about this bill, this is Parliament's bill, not just a government bill. Because if we're calling the best of who we are to the intent of this bill to do the best that we can for the outcomes of all of our tamariki, then it's something that we should do that's never been done before. Could we call this Parliament's bill, not just a government bill of the day? And so that's the first thing that I would say. So my reflections would be that, and again, I want to acknowledge and thank uh, the Prime Minister for her words as well. Uh, Mr Speaker, when I think about this, uh, this issue of poverty is nothing new. And uh, in fact, in ancient words, in the, in the book of Deuteronomy, uh, uh, chapter 15, verse 11, it says this, for the poor will always be with us, so I command you to be open-handed. In other words, it calls on us to do the best that we can to be open, to be caring, to be sharing in the best ways possible. So the issues of poverty are nothing new. But what it does command on every single generation of every time is what will we do about this? And so as the government of the day, as parliamentarians of the day, this is our responsibility as well. And so I thank uh, Parliament, I thank um, the Prime Minister and others for us in being able to talk about this bill. Uh, about our bill. Uh, Mr Speaker, when I think about those that are listening out there today to listen, to hear about the comments about this bill, this bill is about reducing child poverty. This bill is about meaning that not only just for those who are in, uh, in the roles of responsibility, whether it be by governing, whether it be by advocacy as members of parliament, whether it be by those who are the officials, I want to acknowledge the officials that have worked through this as well who've given us the best of their ability. We've challenged, we've changed things to in order to get this to a point where we believe it has, at this time, for this day, the right pathway to address this issue in regards to poverty. But there are a few things that I have to say that we've been challenged with, and in my speech, I want to talk about those challenges, and again, that we have had. One of the first things that indicated in regards to the first draft of the bill and with the submissions that we were reminded of is that why was the Tiriti of Waitangi left out of the bill? It was left out of the bill because sometimes in the system and in our consciousness, though we know it's the right thing to do, we forgot it. And we forgot the importance of the place of it. So we, and with the officials, ensured that it was a priority of place, pride of place, in the first components of this bill where the Treaty of Waitangi was in there. But here's the other challenge to the system. And I say this, that we must challenge the system. When we had that, uh, 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 initiated back into the bill itself, and then it talked about the roles of responsibility in that. It declared the fact is that under the Treaty of Waitangi, under our ob obligations, that we would consult and report. Now, while that seems like that's normal, that's pro that's, we've done this before, I want to challenge that, because if we are going to do better, if Māori are factored in as some of the statistics that we are talking about in regards to child poverty, then I believe the fact is that we could and should do better. So what does do better look like? Well, Mr Speaker, on the bill, we also talked about our obligations to the United Nations, SDGs, which is Sustainable Development Goals, about halving poverty. We signed it, we took up our responsibility around that, but then it talked about their responsibilities for us as a country to those SDGs. We talked about judicial obligations. Now, Mr Speaker, I had to challenge the system then, because it was almost as that we gave more weight 
to the United Nations obligations than it is to the Treaty of Waitangi. Mr. Speaker, this is not a criticism, but this is about challenging the system. We challenging the system. So I want to, again, acknowledge the fact of our Māori colleagues on the other side that are now in the opportunity to influence this. I want to ask you to do this. Keep challenging the system that when we say that for our obligations under the treaty, it is more than just to consult and to report. And yet under the UN obligations, we have judicial obligations. We can do better, we should do better, and if we are going to make a difference, we will do better than that, Mr Speaker. So if that's the case, and if we are saying we are going to lift poverty above the politics, and if we are talking about, in this, grade, in this regards, the Treaty of Waitangi, those for Māori, then can I challenge also to New Zealand First and others that are out there, when we think about whānau order, and I want to acknowledge the Honourable Penny Henare and the role that he responsibility has, because if this is the best of us putting that forward, if it is to deal with the issues for Māori that are, fit, are situated in this bill, then why is it that we are playing politics with whānau order? And I believe the fact is that whānau order is putting power in the hands of the people where actually they can decide, and I would hope that this would elevate it to the point that a decision would be made to empower whānau order to do the role that it was destined to, to, to play, and which is that Māori have the ability, as it, through their commissioning agents, to decide for themselves how they can partake there through navigators and through others in their roles to be able to ensure that they can make a difference for Māori in our country, and in this case, for Māori children. So I would put that challenge out there. Let's lift that above the politics. Let's allow final order to do its work for Māori in particular, uh, Mr Speaker, and I think that's critically important uh, for us as well. Mr Speaker, the other areas that I think are important for us is then, and again, putting the best of us forward to this, is around social investment. I know at the moment it's something that actually that the uh, current government is taking on board, but I would encourage you with this. The best of us that we would put forward, and I want to acknowledge the Honourable, the Right Honourable Sir Bill English, where he talked about the fact is that how could we challenge the system? If we're going to challenge the system so that it changes, then social investment was actually doing that. In other words, for every dollar that we invest into the system, how do we know that it's making a difference? And so what we would like to do is this. We would like to challenge the system. I'm challenging the system, not challenging the people. That can the system do better? I believe it can do better. We on this side believe it can do better. And so therefore the challenge to the system is the fact is that how can we hold the system accountable? We believe that social investment was a way of being able to do that, hence the reason why the measures and the targets was our push towards that. And I believe that we've reached a, a point where we can agree with, but I would still advocate for the position that social investment in its principles and its ideals is to challenge the system and to hold that system to account. If it can do better, why should it not do better? The targets that we had actually put forward, the measures are again about the system. Because if the system is not treating people like people, not just like numbers, that's what we actually did on this side of the house when we were on that side of the house, was to make sure that it would do that. So we do not backtrack from setting those measures, from setting those targets, because we think that they're critically important as well. Uh, Mr Speaker, we know inside of this, the child poverty indicators are critically important. We thank the Prime Minister and also to the DPMC and the staff that worked with us to get to a point where we could have some targets, some measures that we could hold ourselves to account. I want to acknowledge the fact is that now we're going to have that from a fiscal perspective where actually the Minister of Finance at every budget will have to indicate how those measures have made a difference. So I want to actually acknowledge that piece of work. I think it's important. I think that work will actually be a, an indicator to the rest of New Zealand that we're putting our, our money where our mouth is. In other words, we're putting the treasures that we think are really important, in this case, children, where we think are important that our dollars are spent in a way that will make a difference. And I want to acknowledge the work that is around that as well. Mr Speaker, I finish my last comments in the minute that I have left with the words in 1980 by Bob Marley. And in 1980, he finally realised that actually he had cancer. And so he wrote a song that he had never written before, and it was called the Redemption Song. And in that redemption song, this is what he said, uh, Mr. Speaker. Oh, uh, well, no. <laughs> yeah. Oh, pirates, yes, they rabbi. Sent I from the merchant ships. Um, anyway, I won't go on about that. But here's what he said in the second verse of the song that um, if we are to emancipate uh, ourselves from mental slavery, none but ourselves can change our mind. One of the challenges to this issue of child poverty, poverty is by choice or by circumstance. 
And our role is not to judge those who are in there, but it's to support them and help them, but challenge them at times. But I would say this, that out in our communities, the change to poverty is not by what we do here in this place as parliament, but also the changes will happen from our communities, from our people, from our whanau, who will stand up and declare that they too will want to be part of that change, that will take up the responsibility to do that. Mr Speaker, this is an important day. This is a day that we would say that this bill and the Child Poverty Reduction Bill is a bill that is Parliament's bill to declare to the nation that we want to change the issues of poverty that affect our children. Thank you, Mr Speaker. The Honourable Carmel Cipollone. Mr Speaker, I apologise in advance.